Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Lotus 25 Coventry Climax kit. It's a 120th scale kit from Tamiya, number 20044. It's still available at most online auctions and quite a few online retailers, so they're still plentifully available. The Lotus 25 was a car designed by Colin Chapman for the 1962 Formula One season. It was a revolutionary design with the first fully stressed monocoque chassis to appear in uh, Formula One. And country, uh, Coventry Climax, they, are a, they were a specialty engine manufacturer in England and they provided the uh, power plant. Now seven of these cars were built, R1 to R7, but R4 was skillfully handled by the legendary Jim Clark, who successfully won the uh, Grand Prix Championship in 1963. Now, this kit also includes some of the markings for the other cars. It's a skill level 3 kit for the advanced builder and features full engine detail and removable body panels for display. It was released in 1997 and there is about 80 pieces molded in dark green, black, chrome, clear with pad printed vinyl tires and water slide decals. The instructions also include paint callouts. And when you're done, it'll be about 9 inches long, 3 inches wide, and 1.5 and inches high. Here are the contents of the kit, and the dark green parts are meant to be molded in color for those that don't want to paint the model. Now there were no flash or mold lines uh, to be found uh, because of the way they were molded. And we'll wash the parts and dry them and then paint them. But you should also note that um, you need to heed the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines of any of the products that you see or hear used in the review. The decals for the kit, and they're uh, very opaque and the register is good. Um, the split decals go across different body panels, but you'll have to uh, slice the number that you put on top of the uh, roundels there. Now we'll be um, using some uh, solvents uh, to make sure that the parts uh, conform to any contours or um, should um, they need to go over rivets or panels. Um, but uh, we'll find out uh, later that we really didn't need them for these, this model. Construction starts with the chassis in the lower control arm section. And you'll need to mask off some of the control arm lower pan there to paint the A-arms and tube chassis parts according to the callouts. You can see the detailing for the parts here. Uh, and as you'd expect, the A-arms and some of the uh, sheet metal are, um, you know, painted with uh, an aluminum color. Now it's time to assemble the um, suspension frame to the lower chassis pan and the body sidewalls. But remember to scrape off any paint or chrome plating so that the parts get a good bond. Turning this uh, sub-assembly over, you can see uh, how the parts go together from the other side. For these parts in the kit, and we'll be adding those to the sub-assembly uh, for the pan there. And it uh, includes the upper front suspension arms, the bracket uh, and the pedals, and the uh, unit that links the pedals, clutch, brake, and accelerator. And the bracket was painted with some uh, racing green, as the instructions say. The instructions also suggest a gold for the... Um, pedals but I that was a little bright so I used some testers brass number 1131 and after seeing that assembled I think it uh, looked a little more realistic. Go ahead and glue the upper suspension arm onto the tub there and then set that aside to dry and then we'll use some of the uh, British Racing green color to paint the bracket and I painted the pedals also and put them aside to dry as a unit. We'll put those parts together um, once the paint had dried and the pedal control unit uh, was glued to the bracket and then the pedals glued into there as well. After the unit had dried, I scraped the paint in the contact points and glued that into position in the tub. The uh, drag link and supports and uprights uh, and the calipers etc. here and we're going to assemble those according to the instructions. Now the um, calipers were painted um, a gold tint. Um, now they recommend you mix some silver and gold uh, but the light brass works pretty well too. And also we're going to use those bushings on the inside but you don't glue those because they're used to allow the uh, tires to rotate later on. So go ahead and assemble these, this, uh, these pieces to the unit. I left the uh, upright uh, supports um, 
just unpainted because they're a nice semi-black uh, color. They, they, will, uh, they will glue and adhere better that way. And uh, they look pretty good even though they're very difficult to see after assembly. The uh, steerable nature of the uh, front suspension is shown here. You can see it uh, completely turned to the uh, driver's side. And um, it's a very robust uh, design for a model kit. Here you can see um, how the pieces interact with each other. And assembling them was pretty simple. The only challenge is to remove the chrome from the steering linkage so you could paint that uh, semi-gloss black. And, and as you can see from the photos, uh, make sure not to glue the uprights to either the lower A-arm support or the steering linkage so that um, the uh, steering linkages will allow it to move. Locate these pieces for the interior components, including the instrument panel the cross brace shifter and part of the engine mount uh, in the rear. Now we'll um, be painting the instrument panel um, the recommended TS-17 gloss aluminum, uh, that's Tamiya paint, and uh, we're going to overlay that with Testers 1250 flat red. It was the closest color I could find that simulated the uh, red leather on the original. Now the instrument rings were uh, highlighted using the Molotov chrome pen and uh, you have to be careful because uh, the chrome will come out too fast especially if you depress the uh, tip. Now even though the paint pencil isn't perfectly chrome it looks really good once it uh, dries. Now you just um, will notice that uh, the rear engine mart here uh, part was um, molded in a close shade of green and the inboard side is going to be very close to the engine part so I just painted the outside with the um, TS-43 Tamiya Racing Green. Next we can uh, install a cross brace to the tub and um, this time I just used some tube cement to make sure the part had time to uh, actually line up properly and had minimal contact area on the glue points so that helped hold it better. Next we can install that rear engine mount uh, and it was, as, as we mentioned, it's painted green. Uh, just make sure that it's uh, fit flush and that it's all uh, perfectly horizontal there to the plane of the uh, pan. The paint was dried on the instrument panel. I went ahead and installed the uh, instrument face, uh, gauge face decals. And it was kind of tedious. You, you have to uh, slide them off and then kind of uh, orient them so that they're properly uh, in position. And use a, um, I used a Q-tip to kind of move them around the way that uh, they would uh, normally be seen. And then once they were in place, I added uh, a little drop of Microset uh, solvent to help them uh, sink into the uh, position and uh, conform to the contours. Now once they were dry, I cemented the instrument panel into place uh, in the, in the uh, tub there. Now go ahead and locate the parts for the radiator, the uh, shroud and the surround, and the uh, radiator tube. I believe that's a rigid tube, and that was painted with um, a steel color. And of course the um, radiator with aluminum, and then uh, were treated with a little black wash for the recesses. Once the assemblies had dried, um, I decided to mount the radiator tube first. Uh, it has a positive mounting point in the back in order to help position the radiator up front. Then I went ahead and glued the uh, radiator into position on the uh, front end of the, the frame supports there. And I used uh, an old uh, modeling trick called India Ink to provide some blackening um, black wash to the radiator recesses uh, to give it a more realistic look. So the red um, arrow here indicates that uh, radiator tube and uh, curiously there's no return tube. I assume it's because you wouldn't normally see it if it was uh, buried in, underneath in the, uh, inside the body. But uh, anyway, uh, it's uh, pointed out here and helps to uh, uh, position that radiator so that it's in the correct uh, spot and uh, straight up and down. Oh, we're already at step six, uh, and that deals with the remaining front suspension pieces and the air intake ducts. And all the parts there uh, came molded in black satin. And so just like with the other parts uh, that called for the semi-gloss paint, I left the air ducts unpainted. They look very realistic, um, and it looks great just like it is. The brackets that hold the air ducts, on the other hand, uh, they call for some uh, Tamiya X11 chrome uh, silver color. And so... I started to like the uh, Tester's Chrome Silver more because it seems to go on smoother and has a more even color. 
uh, but I didn't have any of that, so I used the Tamiya on the brackets and, and uh, came out pretty nice. You can see the air ducts installed here, and uh, the contact areas for the glue points are small, so I used a little tube glue on this uh, to make sure it had a little extra um, bulk to uh, enable them to stay in position till it dried. And next we'll be working with the rear suspension pieces, and they're, they're very close to scale, but they're also extremely fragile. So when you're handling them to scrape off any chrome or just cutting them off the tree, you have to be very careful not to break them. And so here are the parts that we'll be using. Uh, they're all chrome plated and in some cases or areas you'll need to scrape that clean in order to get a good glue joint. All the parts have uh, positive contact points where they're glued, uh, but um, you'll need to, I use some, again, some tube glue here to make sure that uh, not only did it have something substantive to keep them in position, but I could also adjust to make sure that the pieces were symmetrical on both sides to each other. So after those lower A-frames are dry, uh, thoroughly dry, you can attach the shock towers to those and the rear brackets. And you shouldn't have any trouble with the fit, but just uh, like before, the parts are fragile, um, so put them in place and make sure they're symmetrical to each other on both sides. On the uh, shocks, I painted the lower sections uh, semi-gloss black, but um, the recesses between the coils, uh, that's where I added some of the India ink, which just kind of runs around the entire area there and gives a nice darkening to the in-between uh, sections. With that uh, treatment, the shocks look really great, um, and where you uh, cut these parts off from the uh, tree, well the, the parts plastic is actually black so it shows up um, and uh, I just used that Motol chrome pen to touch those up and blend it in and it looks really nice uh, as a repair. Next we can start working on the engine so we'll be uh, using these pieces and you can locate those from the kit. So I went ahead and assembled the basic block and the transaxle there and then these pieces get painted with um, the Tamiya uh, XF16 flat aluminum. Now we can paint the uh, add-on pieces that you see here from the kit um, and then let those dry for assembly. Once dry we can go ahead and assemble the pieces here and as you can see uh, the basic motor is starting to take shape. And you can see some of the exhaust headers are being installed along with the front portions of the engine. And then uh, once you get that into position, you can paint the rest of the remaining engine parts and, and assemble those according to the instructions, and it looks pretty nicely. And we'll finish up uh, later with the rest of the headers. And you see some of the attendant pieces here, the alternator, etc., and also the, the main headers. And those first two are attached to the block. And um, you want to um, line those up properly, so uh, use some slow setting glue there to get a secure bond. Uh, you know, to because of the position of the headers. Illustration here in step 11 will show you how to finish up the engine with the uh, headers. Um, it consists of four um, more headers and the collector tops for the exhaust. And due to the tension on the headers and a close fit, um, I once again used some uh, slow setting glue to make sure that everything stayed in alignment until the glue set. And it does a good job of um, putting those uh, pieces together uh, for this type of arrangement. Next we'll be um, installing the engine in that top plate there um, into position into the body and as you can see it uh, slips right in there it's a pretty snug fit but uh, it fits very well. With the engine now in position on the um, glue points uh, we can go ahead and uh, put the collector top on there and uh, when the uh, all the headers are in position and dried and you can paint the collector top uh, semi-gloss black. And then once all that paint is dried, uh, the, um, we can glue the engine you know, firmly into place in the, into the tub to make sure that uh, pins on the tub are completely inserted into the mounts uh, because it's a tight fit. So make sure you move them around to secure them uh, properly. Otherwise, uh, the engine will rise up and be uh, at a bad angle. So then you wouldn't be able probably to install the two exhaust pipes. And so after um, I installed the engine uh, and let the glue notice uh, dry, I noticed that mine had slipped out of the mount and, and uh, because it's slow setting glue, I just pushed it back into position. Now in the next step, we can work on rear axles. 
Nicely illustrated in the uh, assembly instructions, you can see how these pieces go together. And note too that we have those uh, internal bushings uh, in the rear um, wheel assemblies that uh, will allow the wheels to rotate later. So the paint used uh, was designated in the instructions except for that gold like color with the mix. Uh, and I just used the brass because I like the way it looks. And it's pretty close to the specified mixture, but you can paint the uh, pieces up as you see here uh, and get those ready uh, for assembly by letting them dry. Locate the control arms you see here and then scrape the uh, plating off from the glue contact points. And then we're going to um, uh, I'll take a look here at the caliper and axle construction. And uh, it's pretty well illustrated, um, and unlike a lot of uh, uh, directions, uh, these are pretty clearly. Um, made to show you how the parts are positioned with each other. See here a close-up of the uh, assembled rear end. Um, the brass color looks pretty good like a casting brass and make sure you install the axles to the transmission before the brakes and chrome supports are added. Um, install the chrome support, uh, the chrome support there uh, at the same time you put the brakes on and then set it aside uh, to dry. I used um, Gorilla Glue, uh, the clear glue for this assembly, uh, and it takes about two hours for that to set. Um, so note that uh, on the final rear suspension uh, work uh, and the roll bar will be done next, so we'll take a look at that. I'm still working at the back end. We'll be adding some lateral links in the, the, the uh, roll bar. And as with the chrome parts, uh, make sure that you scrape any any uh, pieces uh, or any plating to make sure that they glue. And I used some uh, semi-gloss black and some aluminum for the roll bar and the seat support. And you're going to want to uh, let those dry thoroughly before you handle them. Next you can see the lateral supports here that are uh, added and that finishes up the rear suspension supports. And they get attached to the body and the brakes. And then uh, let them dry for uh, thoroughly before uh, you will go ahead and install the roll bar and the firewall. First install the firewall there and then the, the roll bar into position. And at this point uh, we're kind of on the downside hill as the, uh, the model is taking uh, shape very quickly. Next we'll be working on these pieces. Um, the uh, seat and the steering wheel have all been detailed. You can see the um, uh, aluminum in the center of the wheel there along with the exhaust pipes and injector stacks etc. So get these pieces and stage them for assembly. Both the seat and the uh, steering wheel were painted with that flat red um, and I used a spray on the seat and, and I just brushed the steering wheel. And after letting the steering wheel dry I used some of that uh, XF16 flat aluminum on the spokes. And then I finished the uh, you know assembling the interior by cementing in the driver's seat and then the steering shaft and finally the wheel using some uh, slow setting glue like tube glue uh, to make sure that they stay in position while the glue sets. Now you see here one of the more um, well interesting parts of the build uh, is installing the uh, velocity stacks and the, and the exhaust and I uh, decided to install the stacks first um, and then I used some slow setting glue and I put up uh, all the stacks on one side and then the other side and I used a piece of uh, 1 16th inch thick uh, stock to separate the uh, two sides and keep them uh, tight together. Just make sure it's vertical and then uh, align them in rows so that they're as, as close to symmetrical as possible on each side. Once they had started to set, I went ahead and uh, installed the uh, support brackets for the exhaust and the exhaust to the uh, headers uh, collectors there. Look for the uh, body panels and the clear glass and mirror um, components and stage those for assembly. So the instructions are pretty clear here and we'll be uh, gluing the uh, front panel on uh, to the main cowling. And then the, of course the rear cowling is removable and uh, also the clear part there um, that covers the injector stacks. It calls for some paint, but uh, I left mine basically clear. Um, and I would use uh, on the um, uh, engine uh, or the windshield uh, and the mirror assemblies uh, some crystal clear or some of the Gorilla Glue clear, um, and then let that set. Now, 
uh, to install the uh, mirrors to the windshield sides, uh, I suggest a small amount of super glue. Um, but nonetheless, now I, at this time, I find out that uh, instead of installing uh, the windshield like I did, it's probably best to wait for that so that you can slip the, um, the main racing stripe on the front cowling there uh, and then put the windshield on after the, that decal is in place. Next we'll work on one of the highlights and that's the tires and wheels. Um, the tires are just beautiful and the uh, pad printing was uh, very nice. Now we're going to uh, paint the wheels uh, with some of the uh, regular testers yellow 1214 color. And then I use some of the chrome pen to highlight the rim and, and the, the bolts there, etc. Uh, for a nice, clean, bright look. You have to give the uh, chrome paint uh, at least a good day to dry. Um, it needs to be thoroughly dried or you'll get uh, fingerprints and actually wear it off if it is dry. So um, the narrow rims and tires go together and then the wider rims and tires for the rear uh, are just uh, assembled as normal. The wheel assemblies are dry. Um, carefully place them into position over the wheel hubs, fronts and rears respectively. And uh, use uh, something on the back side of the brakes there to make sure that you don't press too hard. But push them firmly into position and uh, into the um, bushings inside and they should continue to rotate with a nice friction fit. So here we are uh, at a point where the construction of the vehicle itself is finished. It's time to go ahead and install those decals. And uh, like I mentioned, I had glued the windshield on, but it wasn't on very tight, so I had to remove it to put that big yellow stripe down the middle of the front cowling. And I chose number four. I like the way it looked, and that uh, represented the Jim Clark car, which was the most winning of the, uh, the uh, Lotus 25 models. And um, I went ahead and used plenty of warm water. Uh, and then position them properly and uh, I didn't even need any setting solution for these. The contours are gentle enough that they go right together but they're a really striking look to the, um, to the model and now the model uh, looks uh, complete with the decals in place. So well, there you have it and here's a, um, a look at my new number four kit permanently ensconced in uh, history inside a plastic box uh, in the uh, uh, Lotus Museum uh, that sits on my shelf and um, this model looks just stunning when you're finished. Uh, it's actually pretty pretty easy to assemble except for some of the fragile parts which uh, require a lot of care and uh, I don't think that even a, a, a average builder would have trouble putting this together as long as they're patient. But uh, once you get it all in position, everything uh, glued and satisfactorily symmetrical, uh, just let it set and the parts will go together very well if you just pay attention to where they're located. Now, I, I don't think that um, anybody uh, would not uh, take a double uh, look at this. Um, so if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this step-by-step -step premium model kit review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel which you can do by clicking on the icon in the lower right hand of every one of our video reviews or you can see us on Facebook and at our website right on replicas.com thanks